Howdy, howdy. We are live, everybody. Well, I think. Let me check my phone. Yep, says we're live. Says we're live out there in the internet land. Out there on Facebook, Snap, Chisel, everything else. I don't know what we're on. Actually, we're only live on Facebook right now. It is Monday, the, what is it? I don't even know what it is. The 9th of April? Yeah. Oh, I'm hopping on early tonight. I always am pretty early on Mondays and Thursdays, but uh, tonight we're going to cover one. We're going to have one more session on actual notes. We're going to cover some advanced notes tonight. Um, not necessarily notes that I think you have to have to kill geese, but these are notes a lot of guys want to learn how to do and add them to their arsenal. So I'm going to do my best rendition of uh, teaching you how to do them or making life a little easier for you to try to figure out how to do them. So, first note we're going to cover is the train note. Uh, first time I ever heard an actual train note done correctly, I mean, I thought it was correctly, it was actually <coughs> quiet. <coughs> Live TV, I got my dog barking. It was out in Maryland um, at the World Championships and Kevin Popo <coughs> was doing it quiet. Kevin Popo was doing it, like, warming up and practicing out outside of the gym or something. I heard it. I'm like, I turned and I looked at it. I'm like, what in the hell is that? Like, holy crap, that sounded just like a goose. Like, like, like real elastically and rubbery and tubey sounding. That was the first time I'd ever heard it. Well, obviously, since then, it's, it's taken off. It's gone a long ways, a lot of different renditions. And since then, a lot of people have really started making up their own notes um, hearing what geese are doing and try to replicate them. Geese do a ton of things. They do. They'll, their vocabulary is huge. But it's all still based off of the cluck and the moan and then all your tongue position. So, first thing we're going to cover is the train. Let me give you a quick audio here. I like the train. Um, just depends. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> You heard that real nasally sound right here, Gertie. Now that is the train. That's what it's what I call the train. Um, here's Red trying to replicate it on a call here. Just doing it by itself might kind of sound weird, um, but just so you get the point of what it's supposed to sound like, lay down. Bones, you're messing up my live feed, dude. Get up there and lay down. Somebody's knocking on the front door. They're just going to have to wait. Anyway, so for the, for the train, you have to make... Live TV here. I don't really care who it is. Ain't nobody breaking in. I know that. Um, the train, though, is pretty hard to do. It's pretty advanced. You have to make your air cavity real small. You have to curl your tongue up. So the beginning of the train note, um, it's very goosey. It's very elastic, and it's got that tubey, rubbery sound to it. It's very much, I mean, if you can master this, it really will help your vocabulary and make you sound real goosey when you start mixing it in with other stuff. Um, it starts with your your mouth cavity like a bus cluck. So it's going back to day one. Your tip of your tongue's anchored down here in your gums, right? And then your tongue comes forward, and you get that bus sound. Okay, that's where this note starts. Now, to get it 
a train sound to get it more nasally yet, you have to actually make your air cavity smaller so you come this way more with your tongue and you push more pressure. Now, I talked about it last week. If you have your hand over the top of a garden hose and water's coming out of it, or your thumb, and you the same amount of water is coming out of it, but you put your thumb on there and it goes a lot further because there's more pressure there, so the water squirts further and goes further. It's kind of the same thing with goose calling is the more pressure you put into that call, the more vibration you're going to get on the reed. So therefore your air is actually going further because it's more pressurized. So for the train, you start with the buzz. <laughs> So to get to start the train sound, go start curving your tongue up more and make your air cavity right here real small. Here's what it looks like. I mean, it's a tiny air cavity. I'm really pushing a lot of pressure right through my teeth. Now I have a gap in between my teeth. Like I call it my bubba gap, but in a lot of my air, I think is probably going through there. But most of your guys' air is going to be coming between your teeth right here, and it's going to be tight. It's going to be a lot of pressure. So you can kind of see it might be hard to see on the phone, but I mean you're crunching that up there, and really making a lot of pressure there. I'll start with my tongue flat up to a buzz and then to a train position so you can hear the different pressure change. I mean, it's a lot of pressure to make this train note. It might even help also on this note only, kind of to bring your lips down a little bit tighter, maybe because it's going to be easier to get more pressure. Instead of holding your lips real wide on the call, you might want to change it down and pinch some of that air going off into your call because that'll also give it more pressure with you pushing pressure with your, with your larynx in your air. So right now, as I'm doing that, my tongue is basically at this angle right here, like a four and a half, five, right there. I mean, it's tight to my teeth, and it's really pushing that air pressurized. Best way to hold your hand for um, a train note is probably to hold it correctly, um, actually have some form into it. Give yourself a little back pressure. It might make it easier to create that train note. But like most of the other notes, your your hand is not that important once you learn it. And you can do it with no hand at all. for is that nasally sound um, a lot of guys try to do it you hear uh, contest callers even a lot of guys that are really good callers and just they just hunt they all try to get that tubey sound right that hollowness that tubey that real goose sound and in order to do that you have to create pressure a lot of pressure it's not more air you're not really blowing a lot more air you're just making it more pressurized and it makes that reed vibrate that much more and with a good set of guts and a good sound call, you really get those goosey notes out of it. So, again, it is pressure. It's going to be hard for you guys to figure out, but the same kind, uh, uh, same kind of deal when I was talking about you whistling. It's the same thing, but you're. I mean, you're pinching everything down. I'm exaggerating it, so you know what I'm saying, but I mean, you are making a lot of pressure. If you have to pinch your lips in some, fine. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So, that's a train note. I think that's a fantastic note. Um, I think it does sound better when it's mixed with other stuff. Um, for the end of the note, most of the notes, we end with uh, our tongue coming back up to our soft palate to cut the air off. With this, the note almost drags out. And the end of the note almost just kind of falls off, like you're falling off a cliff. So, I'll try to explain. The best way to explain it is, you use this part of your throat, I would say, to cut the air off. It's all about air control, too. That's with any note. Air control, mouth cavity, and pressure. But... Your tongue's way up like this. When you when you want the note to end, you want it to gradually end. You don't. It's not real sharp. You can hear it kind of winds out. Okay. And I'm cutting the air off with this part of my throat, kind of maxing my whole throat, not necessarily my tongue, but just. And then when the, the the note is done, my tongue's still not touching my soft palate. It's still down. And the air's just getting cut off back here somewhere. So, train note. It's all about pressure. It starts the same place for a buzz cluck, and you push it up, push more pressure, maybe pinch your lips down a little bit, and get this air cavity right here tiny. And like my drawing here, I know you guys love my art. You know you do. Don't pretend you don't. My tongue kind of has this deal where almost like you could lay a finger on there. It kind of arcs the tongue. And that's kind of my, my air tunnel for me. That might be a little bit different for you guys. But my tongue actually has a spot where it just kind of makes a tunnel right there. And that's what mine does. Maybe your guys won't. Maybe yours will just be even, but that's how my tongue looks most of the time for almost any note. So we're going to move on. Next note. Um, oh, guys guys were asking me uh, when to use a train note. Like I told you, a train note's not something that you're just going to see geese and put on them and they're going to turn and come right in. It's, it's not sharp. It's not aggressive. Um, geese do it a lot when they're quarreling back and forth. So within a group of geese on the water or on land, You'll hear one of them, like in that audio I played earlier, just aggressive, nasty sucker. He's pissed off. He doesn't want somebody in his area, whatever. And he's got that neck stretched out, and they're going back and forth at each other. They're quarreling back and forth. So the geese do it all the time. But when do I actually use it hunting? I don't remember the last time I used it hunting. It's just something else you can add to your arsenal. Um, I don't think it's going to hurt necessarily to use it. But it's you're not gonna you're not gonna kill more geese by learning how to do the train note. You're gonna kill geese by knowing how to cluck, and if you can cluck good, then you moan. That's how you're gonna kill these. All these other notes I'm covering, guys just wanna learn them, so I'm gonna try to cover them. Uh, next thing is the buzz cluck. Seems sounds simple, right? I don't know what call is gonna be better to do that with, but I don't have any audio of the buzz cluck. The buzz cluck to me, just another thing you can put in your arsenal. I use it sometimes early season. Um, if I'm hunting with a bunch of other people and they all are low pitched and <laughs> normal, I like to use a buzz cluck on a little bit higher pitch call because a young goose through September, they're still developing their vocal cords. A lot of times they can't make a real deep honk. It's, it's high pitch. Also good if you hunt lessers, um, some of the birds down the central flyway too because it's real scratchy and you open your hand up so it's going to be a little bit higher pitch and more powerful buzz cluck pretty simple right you get your tongue up you buzz you don't use your throat though it's the only difference it's the same thing as a regular cluck but you don't use your throat your voice you don't use your voice and you open your hand up and push more air so you get that buzz See, it just broke over automatically. All you're doing is just pushing more air and open your hand up. <laughs> Basically, it's a clear honk or clear cluck with no voice to it. But the reason it has that buzz is because I got a tight air cavity and my tongue's in the right position. So that's the buzz cluck. 
I don't use it much, sometimes early season. It's just a fun note, another note to add to your arsenal. Um, no voice, it's just pressure. <laughs> Back of the call, it's... <laughs> and you open your hand up, let the sound come out, and get that buzz. I don't know. Some calls are easier to get on than others. Depends how the call's tune. <laughs> like I said, all it is is a cluck, buzzy, no voice. Uh, let's try it on uh, uh, Next Gen Mr. Big. This is another good time to use it um, of on a higher pitch call if you're trying to call in lessers or something. <laughs> anyway, buzz club. Not going to spend a ton of time on it. Most of you guys probably won't ever need it. Won't ever use it. But it's another one you can play around with and figure out how to do. Let's see. I'm just going to keep moving here. Do some Q&A here in a little bit. Um, my time's always pinched on Mondays. But Next note. Kind of a different note. Um, the reason I'm, I'm going to teach it to you. I don't really know if it's a note. I just made up a name for it. Like everybody makes up names for everything else. But basically it's a moan. It's a real short moan. Um, I call it the jump moan. And it's just, here's here's what I consider the jump moan. Uh, let's see. Here's some audio of what I consider this note. Oh, I got it on mute still. <laughs> That right there. <laughs> so you can see there, it's, it's mixed in with a longer moan too. But here's what I call um, the jump moan. The reason I want to teach it to you is because it's a great transition note because geese do it all the time. Now, normally they're a little bit more nasally. I find it a little easier to do blowing clear, not using your voice. So the jump moan, <clears throat> that's usually when geese, um, like that there, it sounded like, I don't remember the actual footage, but it sounded like um, a goose on the water or on land kind of starting to shake his head, getting aggressive getting ready to jump into a long, long spit moan or something like that, taking off. That's when I hear it the most. Um, it's a great transition note. It makes everything smooth. You can bounce it in with the long moans, and it just it flows nice, and it actually gives you goose rhythm. And the same thing with this note, it kind of falls off too, um, just like the train. You kind of, at the end of it's sloppy, but it's not. I mean, you got to have air control to back your throat, but you don't use... Uh, on the back of your tongue to stop it. So here's the jump moan. So you start way up front, just like you would a buzz, but it's it's more clear. You don't necessarily have to have the buzz. And then you just ta ta. So right off the beginning, you push a lot of pressure. Ta ah. Uh, not a spit note necessarily, but ta ta. A lot of guys are, you hear a lot of guys blowing calls now. They're doing this clear, tubey sound and stuff. Do geese do it? Yes, all the time. Do I think it's going to help you kill more geese? Again, no, it's not. But your tongue is about right here in three or four position, and it's... You don't cut it off right here. You let it fall back down and let the air keep coming. You cut it off the back of your throat. Ta, ta, ta. 
back of the call, it's like this. And you can you can maybe see my throat cutting it off. I'm cutting it off back here. So my tongue's up. It's a different note, but it's really fun to do. And if you can figure out how to do it, it goes well with that long drawn out moan like a goose is getting ready to take up or get up and start flying away like this <laughs> so it's a good transition note if you want to use it other stuff i'm sure you can too but when do i use this Hardly ever. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. It's just another note you can add to your arsenal if you want to learn how to do it. So, again, I'm going to go backwards now because I'm going to finish with the train because I think the train is the goosiest sound there is for sounding like that big old mean gander. Um, so, jump moan. Play audio one more time. <laughs> That goose there has a real nasally mean sound to it. And I can't, I can't dare do it near that good. But that's the jump moan. Buzz cluck. We covered that already. It's very simple. Get your buzz, just like on day one, and just blow clear. Don't add no voice. Open your hand up and just let it fly. Some calls are going to be easier than other ones. Well, that one there is a little bit too deep. on this one better <laughs> anyway that's the bus club i wouldn't worry about them too much if you can't get them um the train note this one here is just it's goosey i mean this this is geese do this all the time springtime winter time it doesn't matter but I mean, it's just shows aggression most of the time. <laughs> so, the whole point of this note is to get you guys to create more pressure up front on your air cavity and to get all these goosey sounds to get more nasally sounds rubber sounds tubey sounds whatever kind of word you want to explain it as you have to create small air cavity right here and like i told you you have to create pressure now it's not more air you're not using more air from your lungs you're just putting more pressure onto the reed by making your air cavity smaller and you're making that reed vibrate easier quicker short little beats up and down which gives it that vibration that buzzy sound i mean it's tight right there my tongue it's almost touching my top teeth i mean it's right up there and again it's up and then i'm letting my tongue down and cutting the air off back here don't use the tip of your tongue to cut the air back off you go and then lay your tongue down 
let the air slowly come over here. And again, I'm trying to explain it slow, but it's a fast motion. Is you're making that air cavity small. <laughs> And then tongue down, the air slowly keeps coming, but you stop it with the back of your throat so it doesn't drag on forever, obviously. So you actually use the back of your throat on this to cut the air off. So um, real quick, here's just a couple renditions of the train sound, how it can be used. It can also be manipulated, high pitch, low pitch, like any other note, just by the amount of air you push and by your hand and what you do. So here's a few renditions of the train note. Um, how it might sound, how you might use it. If you can't do it, no big deal. not a note that's gonna have a crack to it it's not a note that you're gonna turn birds with it's just a natural sound that they do all the time so um and one more getting you can get real quiet with it too like here on these next gen calls this is a big kahuna next gen i use almost 90 percent of the time it's my favorite call but i will plug this end right here and let the sound come out of this hole i've showed you guys before and you can watch some of our other videos we have this volume hole here that just shuts the volume down it does it's not for throwing your sound around it's for getting quiet my three advanced notes I had for you guys I wanted to get those in there quick before we move on too far and start putting stuff together but um, tomorrow we're gonna move on past the individual notes and we're gonna talk about goose rhythm how you get goose rhythm and I'm gonna try to make you understand what goose rhythm actually is so let me grab my phone here turn it around see what we got shaking on here What is going on, everybody? Not too many people. A few people on here. What's up, Nate? What's up, Seth? What up, Charlie? Oops. I don't know why I did. Anyway. Um, Ryan. Tim, I want to get those calls in my store. Not happening, bud. Um, I have no more... Cut off all my retailers, all my dealers. If you want, not all you can see is my face now. If anybody wants Big Sean calls or any of my product, it's direct through me only, my website only. No dealers, no retailers, nothing. It's all through me. Um, cutting out the middleman. I can run promo codes, save all these guys a little bit of money. Who wants to pay full price, right? I wouldn't. I don't. So, you know, save save my customers money, give them a better product, knowing it's coming from my place to their place, from my lips, and straight to them so it doesn't get messed with. A lot of times we had problems with calls getting messed with on shelves, whatever. And, I don't, frankly, I don't feel like giving my money to any retailers. So, sorry, bud. Everything's all direct. What's up, Travis? Hi, Joe. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the phone around here so you can kind of understand. This line right here is about where my teeth or my tongue is when I'm really trying to push pressure into that. 
um, I, I push up in there and I make this air cavity right here small. I explained to you guys, I got that bubba gap in my teeth here. So I think a lot of my air actually comes through my teeth, but you guys would be coming, you know, between your teeth like this and you're really making this small and you can even pinch your lips down more, um, come down a little bit tighter on the call. This is the only note I would recommend this with, but come down a little tighter, make the space in there more pressurized and you're going to get more pressure here. Because it's a smaller space, the air is going in, and you get more pressure here because it's a lot smaller space, and there's not much space for your air that's coming over the top of your tongue. So, yeah. Um, I think that's awesome. No one can play with calls. Yeah, I mean, it. yeah, it's straight to the customer, and it's just the way things are anymore. I mean, if you guys haven't noticed, retail's going wayside. And I just don't even want to mess with it. So, if you guys don't follow me on Snapchat, there it is. Biggie822. Instagram, chisel, chat, chisel. Uh, everything will be on our YouTube channel, like always. Just search Big Sean or School of Waterfall. Um, or Big Sean, and like I've told you before, there's two of us. One's me, the real OG, Big Sean. And the other one's a little black guy. I looked up their day, so he's 30. We looked it up together, I think. He's 30, he's like 5'8. But I don't get it. Whatever, doesn't make any sense to me. I am Big Sean. He's infringing on my trademark. I was born five years earlier than him, too, so. What's up, William? Well, I'm trying, just trying to, you know, like I told you guys beginning, if I could get to a point where I helped one person to do it better, it'd be worth it to me. Um, not in focus. Who cares? You don't care. I got one question for you. How many people do you know can't blow a goose call with a dip in their mouth? I don't know. Anybody comes up to me blowing a goose call with a dip in their mouth and then they want me to tune it, I hand it back to them to go wash it out. Yeah, Travis, in our hunts, we try to, I try to give tips. Like I've told you before, I don't know you, but I've told other people, you know, my goal is to make you, all you guys better waterfowl hunters. Um, what's up, Matt? I, I want to hunt next to guys or down the road from guys that know how to hunt correctly. <sighs> Decoy the birds, do it right, basically. I don't want to hunt next to guys that are past shooting on a fence rose. That makes my life twice as hard whether i'm guiding hunts or if i'm just hunting for fun or or filming um you know my goal is to make you guys better hunters you guys are better hunters it actually is better on me i don't there's plenty of birds to go around we're all going to kill birds um i just want other i just want people to be better hunters do things the correct way actually finish geese um call at them and shoot them correctly just would be be better for everybody now i know there's some days where stuff just doesn't work out i get it doesn't always work out but cody yeah you can send it um why do you think it's off sometimes on those uh these guts are finicky and that's one of these live sessions i'm going to cover tuning calls and i'm going to cover my guts specifically but Sometimes, bud, that reed right at the tip will hang up inside of there, right? Like, it's this one's not. But sometimes if those guts shift by, I mean, just a smidgen, just a little bit. If you push down on there and you can hear your reed catching or feel it catching, which this one's not. Sometimes what you can do is just take the, the, the gut itself, kind of just pull it out a little bit. Just kind of wiggle. I mean, minute. If you see it move, it's too much. Like you just want to kind of give it a little, a little bit, so you can push that in there and not let it touch. So it could be that too, um, or it could be totally whacked. So if you want to, you can send it in. That's the sound you don't want right there. Well, now you can't freaking hear it. There it is. See that reed sticking in there, and sometimes. Sometimes all you got to do, honestly, is just wiggle that a little bit, pull it out. So, um, but yeah, if you want to send it in, want me to retune it, look at it, no problem. 
Um, all the information is on the website to where to ship it to and all that. Under the Retunes tab. The Retune tab. Each one of these reeds, they're all finicky. And in these next generation calls, they're tuned to sound like geese. I mean, these are for killing geese. So therefore, when I tune them, I shave those reeds thin because they just sound better. You can get those train notes and those nasally sounds out of there. So... So I wasn't sure if you could tell earlier, I got about five minutes here, but making this air cavity small, it feels weird talking to you on my phone like this because looking here, the camera's over here, and my eyes are going this way, it's like, anyway, but see my tongue's got a little bit of a groove down the center, almost like you could lay a pencil in there. See, there's my bubble gap. I never got my teeth fixed. I really don't give a crap. But so you're really making that air cavity small in there. You're really making that pressurized air. That pressurized air is what makes that reed vibrate faster and more up and down and it gives it that tubey buzzy sound. <laughs> and that's the sound a lot of you guys want. You want that goose sound, that tubey um, elastic sound. So that's how you do it. If you want to mess with all these advanced notes and try to do all these notes that guys make up names for, more power to you, man. Um, you're not going to kill any more geese than the next guy if he's good at clucking sharp and calling geese and actually hunting birds. Um, he's going to kill them better than you are sitting over there doing those goofy notes. But if it's something you want to learn and you've already mastered everything else, then move, move on to that. Hey, hold on. i got to hit this, Travis, so I can see what you're asking uh, hey, I'm wanting a call for big honks here in Utah. We do not have little geese. So I need to call or email what I would like and we can talk. I think you're on to something. Yeah, I mean, it's very simple, Travis. There is... Uh, the days of acrylic are done. There's a lot of guys get stuck in the past. And uh, not just call companies or anything, but everybody's kind of stuck in the past is, you know, retail. Retail's done. TV. TV's done. I mean, it's still there right now. Mark my word, in two years, it's already fizzling out. Um, acrylic calls. I'm going to make them fizzle out because eventually I'd like to not even make acrylic. Maybe like one or two colors and that's it. Um, it's not the future. It's not goosey. It's not, um, it's not indestructible. It breaks. It's a hard material. It breaks. So if you want something that sounds like a big honker, always go with the Big Kahuna. Yes, I would suggest the next gen because that's the best in our lineup and is unlike any other call in the market. Now, on the guts, it's going to depend on if you're an experienced caller or not so much and you want something a little easier. So if you're an experienced caller, you can blow a call, you really want that goosey sound, go with the red, white, and blue guts. If you're a beginner, you still like it pretty easy, you're still kind of learning some stuff, then go with the gray guts. They're both broke in, but the blue ones are really broke in more and more, and that's what I use in all these call sound files because they sound goosey, man. They really sound good. So basically what you're saying is you want to get the gap small enough to build pressure up high enough to make it sound like a goose. Yeah, basically. That's what. That's all that you're... When you, when you create, when your mouth cavity and you create a smaller air pocket inside there, that's what gives you more pressure because your tongue's pushing forward more, just like your thumb over the water, your tongue's pushing forward and it's making it more pressurized. It's pressurized air. It's hard to explain, but the more you play with it and start pinching your lips down, get your tongue way up there and make that air cavity small you'll hear the call vibrate some calls 
Like if you got a call with stock guts, you're probably not going to get that sound. You're, it's not going to happen. Or if you got a call that's tuned really easy, maybe doesn't have a thin shaved reed, you're not going to get those goosey sounds either. Um, you got to have a call that can produce those sounds. You want a call with really broken in guts and thin shaved reed to produce those goosey sounds. Because a regular call with stock guts or just a standard acrylic call with whatever guts in it, you're going to have a really hard time getting those train sounds. That's why it first came to the contest scene, because guys were contest calling. They always had their old broken guts, and they were really worn in. So the first time I heard Kevin Popo do it, I was like, like holy crap, that sounds like a goose. And he had broken guts. Those were his contest guts, um, and they sound fantastic. And that's what these are molded off of are my old contest guts. So it's going to be a lot easier to get a train note and some of these other advanced notes on a more broken in uh, set of guts and more advanced type call, I guess you'd say. Uh, all right, guys, I'm going to get off here. Um, as well as you know, everything's going to be on YouTube channel. Search it. Um, tomorrow, we're going to move on a little bit. We're not going to cover individual notes anymore. Um, that's what's nice about these. You can hit them and bang them and do whatever you want with them. You can't mess them up. Just can't break them. I get tired, so tired of stuff breaking. Like anything I use. My truck, decoys, and anything, I get tired of stuff breaking. My stuff ain't breaking. Um, anyway, so tomorrow, we're going to talk about goose rhythm. Try to explain to you what I call goose rhythm. What it consists of. How to develop it. Um, and then the next day we're going to go on putting some notes together, but yeah, we got to keep our goose rhythm. If you lose your goose rhythm, then you're just another caller like the guy down the road. Um, tomorrow I'm going to try to bring Brennan Hardy on with me, um, live. Tomorrow we're going to go live at 7. So tomorrow and Wednesday we're going to go live at 7. I'll put another post up, but it's getting better. It's getting good. We're getting into some more advanced stuff now, so it's going to get fun. Um, but you watch the first one or the second one and you still don't have those down pat you're not sharp you're not where you think you need to be go back keep watching them don't watch these until a month from now or something you don't want to develop bad habits old habits trying to get these fancy notes um bad habits rather not old but you don't want to develop those bad habits start from scratch all right start from scratch get that buzz get the natural sound that you need to get before you start moving on if it's the end of summer, and it's uh, it's August, right? And you're just now getting that cluck mastered. I mean, you can pick it up and... Oh, yeah, I was tuning that one, wasn't I? I messed it up. But if you can pick the call up... Okay. If you can do that, good. You'll kill as many geese is the next guy down the road if you can cluck sharp and have a couple different variations of it don't worry about man i gotta hurry up and get that spit note figured out or the train note come on man you don't need that stuff to kill geese i'm just trying to teach you guys that uh, because a lot of guys want to know about it i don't use it i kill a couple geese here and there so keep it simple walk before you run and then if all you can do is ever walk really fast hey man that's good you can get wherever you want to go by walking fast all right, hopefully everyone has a good night. I'm out of here, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace, love, pray hard, work hard, bye.